These are the doctors that look after you who are going to be striking for 72 hours in March. So remember to like, share and subscribe. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Midinveed Singh. I'm an emergency medicine specialist. It's actually a very complex issue, so I'm going to break it down for you. The news and other headlines will say doctors have received a 26.1% pay cut since 2008. But what the underlying issue actually is, is that it's about patient safety. These strikes that the junior doctors have balloted for are so serious that it includes the walkout of even the emergency services. These strikes are so serious that they are called a full industrial walkout. That includes on calls, the emergency department known as accident and emergency or any other type of cover. So what is a junior doctor? A junior doctor is any doctor from the point of graduation, so a newly qualified doctor, all the way up until they become a consultant. So a junior doctor includes all doctors apart from qualified general practitioners and consultants. So essentially, junior doctors are the bulk of the workforce of the NHS. There are about just over 127,000 doctors in the United Kingdom. About 55,000 of these are at the consultant grade. There are about 73,000 junior doctors that are left in post. Of those 73,000, and junior doctors, some are going to be full time, some are going to be part time. So even with all these number of doctors that you think that we have, we are about 9000 doctors short. But actually, we have to look at how many doctors are we short in relation to the average for the European Union. We are actually about 50,000 doctors short. That's unbelievable. So if you have a look at this graph that compares other different countries, you can see that England is down just below three doctors per thousand patients. The average should be just about 3.75 doctors per thousand patients. And the funniest thing is you can see so many countries outperforming us. You have Luxembourg, Belgium, Slovenia, Latvia, France, Estonia, Ireland, Hungary, Italy, Czech Republic, Denmark, Sweden, Spain, Germany, Lithuania, and Austria. It's actually quite embarrassing to look at this graph. I'm wondering what you think. So you have doctors over here taking career breaks, doctors looking to go to other countries, and actually you'll find that doctors are completing exams to go to other countries such as Canada and the United States, because even though the initial years are much more tough, the actual outcome when you are in attending, which is the equivalent of a consultant, not only is the pay four to eight times so much better, they also have a better work-life balance, they also have less stress because they have more doctors per population head, which means for a better overall lifestyle. But it also means a much better and safer working environment. Who would not want that? We also have doctors retiring so much earlier because of the issues that have occurred with the NHS pension and the fines and the massive taxes that they have to pay as a result of the NHS pension. So with all these different factors means there are massive gaps for doctors. These gaps in the doctor workforce leads to massive stresses, a massive burden placed on doctors working in the hospitals. It means that a doctor has to work so much harder, having to see so many more patients. It leads to actually a more difficult, stressful, anxiety ridden and dangerous environment. Can you imagine having several emergencies going on at once and not only are you having to deal with a potential cardiac arrest, there might be a case of sepsis going on or an angry patient, upset relatives and having to deal with all these different complex issues at the same time when you have a reduced number of doctors working, it doesn't need for a safe environment, it doesn't need for a environment that anybody would want to go to work in. And where there's all these issues of increased stress and pressure, this can also lead to mistakes. And that is something as a group of doctors we do not want anyone to make because the outcome for that is very bad for the patient. And that's something that we don't want. That's not why we came into the profession. We've come into the profession to help people but if mistakes are going to occur because doctors are more tired, there's not enough of us to look after the patients, then that leads for bad patient outcomes. And that's something that we do not want at all. There's also been a rise of doctors taking sick leave, especially because of the rise of the stress levels and the anxiety levels because of the fear of making mistakes and having complications and the potential for hurting a patient. This has led to doctors being off sick. That means less doctors on shift. That means even more difficulty for those that are coming to work. That only then further impacts the patients. This leads to a very difficult environment for anybody to work in. And it leads to an environment where it's very difficult for anyone to do the best job that they can. And this is why doctors are striking so now I'm going to show you the junior doctor pay. And as you can see from the table here, a junior doctor, a brand new doctor starting at the most junior level will be earning just over £29,000. And each year as they go through the different ranks, 
their salary will increase appropriately. So in the hospital, during the day, at night, weekends, you will have senior doctors known as registrars. They're going to be earning just over £58,000. These are very senior, very experienced doctors. These are the ones who are going to be making the decisions about your family members, about yourself, about me if I ever became a patient. And in different fields, for example, in emergency medicine, they'll be the ones performing all the different emergency procedures, such as the cardiac arrest called for children and adults. They'll be the ones putting the tubes, the big lines into the chest. They'll be the ones looking after all the trauma calls that come to the emergency department. They'll be treating sepsis. They'll be putting lines into different parts of your body using the ultrasound. They'll be relocating all the different dislocations, sedating patients to do different emergency procedures. You name it, they're the ones looking after you at your worst and most serious critical condition. So again, I'll pose the question to you, is that a decent amount of money to pay someone who's going to be performing some of the most important things to keep someone alive? So for the different type of work, the nature of the environment, the intensity, but actually more important is the responsibility, the dedication and the risk to complication that we are dealing with. It's not just about the amount of work to do. And that's why it can't be compared to other professions. Every job and profession is going to have their stress, difficulties, but there's only going to be a handful of jobs around the world which are going to be equally comparable to what a doctor has to deal with. And with a pay decline of 26% added on top of all the other factors, it doesn't make for a good environment for anybody considering to become a doctor to go into. You have to look at the fees that it takes to become a doctor, you're talking about almost somewhere between 70 to 100,000 pounds in terms of your own costs for training to become a doctor at university. Me, myself, to this day, I am still paying back my student loan fees. So when young people are considering should they be a doctor, they're gonna look at all these different factors. They're going to look at, actually, is it even gonna be worthwhile? Or they'll think, we'll do the training and we'll go to a different country where actually life and everything else is gonna be so much better. This is why it is a serious issue, and that is why it should be taken seriously by you as the public. It's actually more for you to recognize the trouble and the dangers that the future of the NHS actually will be in. And that has a direct knock-on effect to us, because one day, you and I will be patients. You may already be a patient at the moment, but at some point, we will need the care of the NHS, we will need the care of doctors. The amazing thing about the NHS is that it provides free care for anybody coming into the NHS. We don't want it to get to a point where it becomes a fee paying service like the United States because there will be a lot of people who won't be able to afford that. I wouldn't want to be in a situation myself as a patient that I come into the hospital and there's not enough doctors, there's not enough nurses to look after me, and then I end up being neglected and something bad ends up happening to myself. That would be unforgivable. And me looking at it from that angle, it's not a nice thing to even think of. And that is how you as the public should be looking at this. Do we want to have a sensible healthcare system that is sensibly and safely staffed? I wanna thank you for watching my video. I hope it was informative. I hope it was interesting. I hope it opened your mind to a few of the things and factors that you didn't know. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to watch more of my videos. Thanks for watching.